Hello, Andres here. Today I want to talk about how you can leverage Office scripts together with ALM normal practices, meaning that you are going to move your solution, your WordPress solution between dev, test, and prod environments. Also meaning we uh, must not forget SharePoint sites. So we will have a dev SharePoint site, a test SharePoint site, and a prod SharePoint site. Now with Office scripts, it's a little bit more challenging because the regular environment variables that we use when approaching SharePoint con uh, the SharePoint connector, it won't work exactly the same. So stay tuned if you are interested in this, you use Office Scripts or you plan to use Office Scripts in your next project, please uh, take a look at this video uh, because I think it's uh, got plenty of value. So let's start with this, um, this simple example. What we're going to do is well, first present what Office Scripts are and how you can leverage them within a Power Automate flow and then the considerations on how to create the environment variables that you will need to use in your Power Platform solution to leverage Office scripts in a sane ALM manner. So let's start with this example. Uh, here, I'm using the workday function. Basically, this is something that we cannot do within Power Automate is we have a date and we want to add, in this case, five days. And this result is going to give us the date that, well, this date plus five days by taking into account weekdays. And if we wondered, there is this additional parameter I'm not using to this function, which is basically adding the holiday, a holiday array so that if in the middle we have some public holidays, then it, this function is going to take that into account to some of those five days. So let's see how this works. We, uh, within any Excel online file, we can create automations, we can have uh, Excel file record our steps, or we can create our own script. I have one here of the script demo, yeah, that we're going to take a look at. And this is basically replacing the old Visual Basic. And luckily, uh, this uses TypeScript, which is a typed JavaScript, which is something that you can, uh, well, look at in the internet and actually use Copilot to create your own scripts if you don't want to take the, well, invest that much time into learning this programming language. Now, if we run this script, it's going to ask for these two parameters, which is basically these two cells that are requested as parameters in here in the script. Okay, and let's put 2024. 07 and the 11th and just add uh, four work days okay so if we run this it's going to give us the 17th let's take a look so we said that it's the 11th right so thursday friday monday tuesday four more work days then we are in the 17th so this is working as expected what we want to do now is use this in a uh, for automate flow. So I'm going to pop this up over here, right over here. So here you see that well, we are manually triggering this flow and then running this this script. This script is this one over here, and you see that it's sitting on top of a SharePoint library. Which, if we go to the shipping library, it's actually this script over here. If we open it, it's, well, uh, we cannot see it here. Uh, actually, if I refresh, I think you, we're going to see what's actually inside. Yeah, here we go. This JSON is containing basically the, uh, the script, the code over here, there, right? Okay. Jumping back to the Office script called by Port Automate. Notice that I'm using this action. When we try to call, when we uh, call from Power Automate and Excel uh, Office Script, let's filter here by run, you see that we have two different options run script and from a SharePoint library. We are using this one, and it's a very important reason we are doing so. So let's take a uh, look at the differences. Let me open what we are prompt to use when we just use the run script action. These three parameters, uh, this is basically the location of the Excel file. This would be exactly this Excel file, okay? And then the script, which is this file, right? Um, 
it's going to, well, you see that we cannot navigate. It's only offering the location of four different scripts. These scripts over here, they are sitting on my OneDrive. This means that if I leave the organization, so imagine that I've created some Excel files with some Office scripts and several Power Automate flows, and I leave the organization, as soon as my user, my Microsoft user is left inactive, these Excel files will stop working because the Power Automate flows will stop having access to these Office scripts. And this actually is something that happened recently in a project that was uh, for a company I was working for. So the previous developer left the organization and the scripts were lost. And you need to have a very valid reason to look into a person's um, uh, an employee's OneDrive, especially if you're in the EU. So I had to completely re, uh, well, create, recreate from scratch uh, the Excel, the Office scripts. So in order to avoid that, we are going to, well, basically never use this action and only use this run script from my SharePoint library. And here, notice the difference. We are going to use the, yeah, workbook location. So this is going to be the same but then the script location, we are asked for the site, the library, and the location of this particular OSTS file over here. And then these two would be the parameters that we are going to deliver to this uh, Office script. Normally we use JSON parameters because this is going to be a complex file, a complex, uh, complex script, uh, but for example, it's enough. Now, so, Point one covered. Never use a run script, only use run script from SharePoint library. Now, what happens when we want to leverage ALM? So instead of hard coding these values here, I want to use a SharePoint location for dev, another for test, another for production, and the same for the uh, workbook and the script. Why? Because, well, while the script may be productive in the production uh, environment and production SharePoint site, I might be developing additional functionalities in the development site and development for platform environment. And I won't, I don't want to affect the production resources when I'm developing. This is basic, well, uh, basic uh, ALM practices. So what I want to do is put all this information over here, depending on environment variables. So how do environment variables look at? look like in SharePoint when we are using SharePoint Actions. Here, this is an example. Instead of hard coding the site address and the library, uh, what I do is use these environment variables, which are configured on a solution. I have a video covering how to uh, leverage these environment variables with SharePoint. And well, it's going to be in the description or in the comments below. But let's take a, take a look at this one moment. So I'm going to show you something very, very interesting. I'm going to look for SharePoint here. I'm going to show you how to use uh, SharePoint file properties. Okay, so I don't know where are you. Okay, files properties only. Okay, it's okay. So I'm going to here hardcode the site. Okay, mm -hmm. this one and the document library is documents. All right, so this is the same, right? Documents, documents, but let's take a look at something. So in the real world, uh, here I'm hard coding the values, but in the real world, I would use environment variables such as this one, right? So environment variable, this is hard coded. We don't want this. But for this example, let's take a look at the big code functionality. So we are going to see here something very interesting. Data set, this is the site, table, this is the uh, document library is good, the internal SharePoint ID. But let's take a look at here when we use big code. Okay, well, source this is the site, well, this is a game, but look at here drive instead of table, and this is a very strange ID. So, here, well, I need to show you something so that you understand the difference between SharePoint and OneDrive because. They are more related than you may think. So when we go here, lists are lists 
in SharePoint and document libraries, well, they are also lists in SharePoint, but actually the files are stored in OneDrive internally. How can I know that? Let's take a look. I'm going to use here the Graph Explorer to illustrate this, okay? Graph Explorer is basically the, well, an application from web application from Microsoft that allows you to navigate the Graph API. The Graph API, if you don't know that, it's basically the API that allows us to connect with all Microsoft services. So most of the things that we use in the connection, connectors that we use in Power Automate that connect to Microsoft 365, are actually leveraging the Graph API. So these connectors, these sections in Power Automate, they're just wrappers around the Graph API to make the life easier in this low code environment. So let's take a look here. I'm going to query the Graph API, okay? And we are going to, well, do some hacks quickly. I'm going to just Good. This is just a trick, bear with me a second, from when I was uh, working with SharePoint Framework. It's a SP page context info site ID. So I'm going to get the site ID. There are other for, uh, ways of doing that. Actually, I'm <laughs> stupid. It's here. So it's a D. Uh, I can get the, the IDs from here. But anyway, let's let's see. bear with me a moment. So if I put the ID here, this is my site, OODEV, right? If I list and look for this ID from here, right? Where am I? Here, list and hit enter. So I navigated to the site. Now I navigate to the list, this particular list, and this is documents. This is a, a library, right? A library. Now, I don't see this this ID anywhere. If I do control F, this ID is not here. But as I was telling you, if we understand how uh, OneDrive and SharePoint are interrelated, this document library or, or here, it's actually a drive internally in Microsoft um, ecosystem. So if we go here and expand and drive, yeah, drive exactly. So what we're going to do is, okay, for this particular list, give me the associated OneDrive. Let's call it like that. Uh, so if we navigate here now, we see this expanded drive, and here is where we locate this ID. So if we want to store this ID in, a, in an environment variable, we will need to navigate maybe with a graph API uh, to find this ID so that we can put it into the uh, proper environment variable for, for example, the production side. So if I were to uh, create an environment variable, what I would do is create here an environment variable and it would be type text and here in the value or here, I would put this uh, ID over there, this ID over here, okay? Now, this is very cumbersome to get the ID like this, if, uh, especially if you're not used to using the Graph API. And this is why I created this application, uh, which you can download it from this repository. And basically, uh, this is the application, a very simple one. With this application, you will be able to navigate your sites, SharePoint uh, libraries, and the items to get the drive IDs for your uh, document library and the ID for your Excel file. And as that, I hope you, well, uh, this was useful for you. Let me know in the comments. If you need assistance, uh, you can contact me using the form on my personal website, which you will find in the description box below. Thank you very much and see you.